she was my one and only friend. She went on a walk and she never came back. The 15 year old disappeared after leaving her Fort Lauderdale home and no one has heard from her since. I, I literally had a pain attack. She would have reached out to somebody. She wouldn't just disappear. She's like a flower. She's so pretty. She had problems with authority and didn't want to be told what to do. It was a habit of hers, unfortunately, that she would walk late at night. She wouldn't tell anybody or inform anybody that she was sneaking out. And it came to a point where Sophie didn't like the rules and ended up moving back to her father's location in Fort Lauderdale. Her relationship with her father wasn't very close. When she moved in with him, I think that she thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. He wouldn't ask anything. Where are you going? Who? What friends are you hanging out with? Just like he didn't necessarily care. She had all the freedom that she wanted. She could do whatever she wanted, yet she still wasn't happy. Sophie was not a confident child. And then all of a sudden, she's like overbearingly confident. She was just saying how beautiful she was, how she could be a star, how she could be a model. Her dad had said that he hadn't seen her for four days and was she lived at my house. When I heard this news, I was worried. I didn't know what to think. I couldn't even grasp it. I thought she would come back, but she never did. Surveillance showed Sophie walking down the sidewalk at 10 p.m. wearing headphones, shorts, and some type of jacket. She spoke about like having a sugar daddy at 14 years old. She's just like, I'm just trying to get money. They would pay for me just to be there. When I talk to people about it now, they said that she probably was being groomed. I believe that the Sophie may be a victim of trafficking. It's the fact that how quick she disappeared Unfortunately, they get involved with the wrong person. There's involved. And now they're having sex with customers on a daily basis because someone is forcing them to do that. And um, there's no way out. I hope that if somebody's watching this video and they know what happened to Sophie, that they come forward. Patrick, he was a very smart, funny, he was a good brother to his little sisters. He's a, he's a very good kid. He's like, go to school, take them to the park, cook their dinner. You know, I had a routine with them. My mother had a history of and my father died when he was 34, I was eight. So, like everything I've been through when I was young, I wanted to be totally different. I didn't want my kids to ever experience that. I didn't get help for my childhood. So as I started having my children at teen years, it started being overwhelming for me. Jaylene was four, Patrick was seven. I just felt like I couldn't deal with what was going on anymore. So I called and I told them that I was I told them that I needed them to come take my children so I could go get the help that I need to get better for my children. And that was the worst thing I ever did in my life. Patrick and Jaylene were placed with their foster mother on the 29th of December, 2009. I was angry, but I, I, I couldn't do anything. I, I reported it to the agency. The agency said they were gonna take care of it and they didn't take care of it. His foster mother and him were supposed to go out and put 
garbage in the, uh, the garbage bin in the hallway. When the phone rang, she went back to answer the phone and he went down the hall on his own. The sister was standing in the doorway, saw that he disappeared. She didn't know where he went. He was actually seen by a neighbor up on the 16th floor around the same time frame that he went missing, but that's the last sighting of Patrick on the, on the 22nd. I woke up on January 23rd to a bang on my door and a detective, he has this fly in his hand and it's supposed to sneeze. And he's like, we're looking for your son. I'm like, what do you mean looking for my son? He's like, your son disappeared last night. Police responded uh, about 30 minutes after the foster mother discovered that he was missing. They searched the trash compactors in the building. They searched the elevator shafts. They, um, aviation came and they did a search of all the rooftops, all the um, vacant parking lots and shopping centers in the area to see if they can get sighting of them. There's several waterways right around that area that were searched by our scuba team on several uh, different uh, dates to see if, if he happened to have gotten into the water. They all turned up negative. Jennifer Rodriguez was arrested today under suspicion she was involved in her son's disappearance. I just felt like, wow, my son's missing after I called you for help and then you throw me in jail. It wasn't just Jennifer that they followed up with aunts and uncles and cousins just to see if there's any connection to anyone that could have taken him, maybe thought they had a better place for him. I believe that if he had the opportunity to call me, he would have because he knew my number by heart. He knew his address, he knew everything. He would have reached out to us. I got one credible lead that after I followed up on it, it absolutely made me believe that Patrick is alive someplace. The lead let it be known that they think that he was brought to Puerto Rico, that he may be in Puerto Rico right now. And it's a lead that I've been following ever since. Hi, miss. I'm investigating the disappearance of this little boy, Patrick Alfred. Without my son, like, how can I, how can I? I would tell Patrick, I love you. I'm never gonna give up on you and be strong.